last episode, we talked about the wonderful world of soft vinyl. I got quite a bit of interest in that video. It has done better than uh, my videos have been doing lately. And I've got a lot of comments and interest about DIY Sofubi or AKA Fofubi. So today's video is going to be all about trying to crack the code of how to do this at home. When I set out to make this video, honestly, I probably spent way, way, way more time than I should have testing and experimenting. I spent two weeks trying a variety of resins, as well as ways to get this paint to stick to resin. I felt like it was important to establish, number one, can we even get something that can hold up and not rip and not bust? And can we get it to take paint? Once I got the confidence that we can actually pull this off, I said, you got to build a character, baby. So let's do that. I only had a few ideas for a concept, so I just kind of ended up deciding to go with a, a, a kitty cat. Mainly because we have a little star about that, our tabby cat, uh, Kenji. He actually had disappeared for a little while. Uh, some dogs had ran him off, and uh, he was the inside-outside cat. And now, he's just a stay-inside cat. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. Huh? Anyway, I was inspired by Kenji coming home to, uh, let's make us a battle cat. Uh, maybe a tabby, a battle tabby. some in a in a spacesuit or a mech suit it might be a little ambitious but let's see if we can sculpt this thing today i'm using some cosplay primarily because we have it but also because it's going to allow us to bake the parts as we go saving your work along the way and craftsman is only attempting a two-part figure which means a single joint right at the midsection. Here's a little roughed out aluminum foil version to show you kind of what I have in mind. It's totally normal to feel intimidated right now. But remember, you can only eat an elephant one bite at a time. So Craftman decided to take a small bite first and make the joint. So I took me a wooden ring from the dollar store and built up a epoxy sculpt around it. Packed it in, packed it, chomp, chomp, chomp. And once it cured, I just basically stuck it onto the end of a fastener bit and, uh, don't do this. Uh, this is the Jerry rig right here. I recommend you finding a joint from an existing uh, action figure or something like that. The joint shape and the profile, I'm really just eyeballing it know when I will use this part to also produce the exact matching socket. So I mainly focused on making sure the diameter will work with our figure. All right, there's nothing to it but just to do it. The biggest suggestion I can give you for success in roughing out a scuffed is to practice subtractive modeling. It's way easier to remove these big chunks than to try to push them in, uh, especially if you're doing hard edge modeling. And I think I'm gonna stick this little face hole right about right here. And don't forget to use your finger fingers. 
any time I got matching parts like these ears right here, I go ahead and get my two pieces measured out, symmetrical. I'm going to stick it in the oven for just a little bit. I've had success reheating cos clay without scorching, but I still don't go the full 30 minutes until the final heat. It's only after the curing stage that I focus on getting a smooth surface, which I accomplish using wet sanding. A sanding sponge is ideal for organic shapes. I'll also straight up cut details into cured clay. All right, still kind of crude so far, but at least we have a base on which to add our details. to use some epoxy scuff, which is a two-part epoxy putty. It's nice because it sticks really well to existing clay surfaces and I don't have to bake it. Added some CA glue to the arms, which I might not should have done that, but my thinking was I wanted to take that sharp corner away. And to get into those corners to sand and polish, I rolled up some 3M sanding cloth. I took some leftover epoxy scup and stuffed it down into any open holes, any areas we needed to flatten. And now a figure does not meet up together flush, so I ran out to the belt sander. And now we're meeting up true and flush. I added just a little bobtail because our tabby friend here actually has a bobtail. He and his brothers were all born with short tails, so uh, we like to imagine there was some wild bobcat genetics at play. And now I'm just packing in, pushing in, mixing some little super sculpty because I want to figure out how much volume right here of epoxy sculpt we're going to need. Because epoxy sculpt is sticky and I don't want to stick it in the face and then have to remove some and it just be a mess. And now the most nerve wracking part I've been looking forward to and dreading this right here, adding the little face details. And as I'm trying to film this, my work leg decided, you know what, I want to get a closer look at what he's doing right here. Look at it slide into the shot. Now let's put us an eye socket right, right now. Okay. All right. Well, we got our eye sockets, but we also got some uh, red paint. It looks like it came off the tool handle, probably because I use safety solvent. That's all right. Oh, 
Now we're going to make us a quick little 30 minute mold using some silicone putty. This will allow us to copy the plug diameter to make a matching socket. And when using the silicone putty, it's really important to pack it in towards the object to get the most accurate detail reproduction. This may not make total sense right now, but it will in just a little bit. Hopefully, uh, if this even works. Now in two or three, four, maybe two, three hours, this will be cured. And I'm checking it against our plug. The diameters line up, feels good. Now we want to glue it to the base of our bottom half. I made me a second little disc and I said, let me just go ahead and build it up. And now the piece of the resistance, we gluing the plug on. And that's when this happened. <gasps> Craftman let CA glue run down to the front all over. I ran through my shop and got some acetone real quick and got the CA glue off of the epoxy scope. Finally, we can make us a mold. It's been a while since we made a two-part mold on the program, so here's the basic steps. I'm using some cheap modeling clay, which will form a bed to hold our character upright and allow us to add these registrations or keys right here. I'm just using the end of a wooden tube handle. You can also stick ball bearings and acorn nuts and things like that. This will let the two mode halves line up later on. I'm using the silicone I almost always use, which is Molestar 15 Slow. A lot of people like the Molestar fast, but I don't like to pour my silicone under pressure. Without removing our character, we carefully peel away the clay layer. All right, we can just about pour the second half, but first we need a release agent. For silicone on silicone, Craftman prefers to use petroleum jelly mixed with mineral spirits. Usually you want to avoid the object and keep it only on the silicone, but with these undersides, it does not matter as much. Most R15 Slow has a four hour cure time. I cut some notches so that we can visually see and align the mold halves together. Oh, and while y'all weren't looking, I scratched the steady craft and initials into the bottom of the foot. Before we jump into the specific products and brands, here's a quick overview of what we're trying to accomplish. We're going to be pouring resin inside of a mold, closing the mold, and rotating the mode while it cures. This will create a nice hollow shell of our object. That's the idea anyway. And if you don't have a rotocaster, which most people don't, a small one like this is about the cheapest you can get because motorized ones run in the thousands of dollars. But check out Robert Talone right here. He's using a DIY rotocaster that he spins by hand. So what you want when you spin a mold, and here I'm doing it entirely by hand, is you want random rotational motion. And he gets good results with it. Wow. The only reason I'm not doing it totally by hand is because our first resin that we tried is Smoothcast 45D, which has a 30 minute cure time. Later on, we're going to use a resin that cures much faster. Now, 
I chose to pour these molds into round containers because I know that at least the flat bottoms will work with the rotocaster, but ideally a squared mold exterior is a safer choice. And speaking of Robert Talon, we got our witness witness cup here with which is just some leftover resin that can give us a good idea of when our molds are ready. But real quick, let's pour up the second half of our character. All right, that's, that's our first result. And as you can see, uh, we get some hollowness, but too thin in some areas. Let's see. All right. That's not, that's actually not, feels pretty good. That's not too bad right there. Now we got some, some flash. All right, that ain't no problem. And now we can see how this joint system works, which it ain't a system, it's just a fairly crude uh, joint if I'm being honest, but look, all I'm doing is I just cut us an opening, kind of rough, you know, but as long as it's about the same diameter as our uh, plug, it should work. Watch this, uh, hopefully, <laughs> let's see. And all we need is just a little edge, a little lip on it to catch. And there's our completed Fofubi resin figure. Pretty neat. Not the prettiest result though, but uh, this right here tells me we can do it. And I believe we can get a much cleaner result and use possibly an even better resin. Now I'm going to try some smooth on KX Flex 90. One small caveat with this resin is it requires a scale. And it's a 100A to 120B mix ratio instead of the normal one to one, but we're not going to worry about it. I'm going to pour our A part. That's 80 grams of A part. And to calculate the B part, you can just cross multiply. So the ratio is 100A to 120B. For the A side, we have 80 grams. 80 times 120 is 9,600 divided by 100 is 96. Craft man, what you talking about? Okay, look, you could just multiply your A part by 1.20 to get the same result. Before we pour the resin, let me show you this real quick. I've already powdered the molds ahead of time. You can use baby powder, cornstarch, arrowroot powder, etc and it will provide a layer inside the mold that will break the surface tension. That's going to help you get a smoother, bubble-free surface. Our molds are ready, and now I'm just adding me a few drops of UVO white pigment. Completely optional. I'm just making sure the surface is opaque and readable. I add the color thoroughly to the resin side first, then I'm going to add it to the second side. Smooth on KX Flex has a nice consistency. I'm not seeing tons of bubbles. I expected it to be thick and bubbly. You can skip this step right here. I mixed up some extra resin so I could pour some test samples. And you can see I'm kind of in a hurry because this resin cures in about six minutes, which means we just gonna hand rotate it. Don't rotate the X and Y axis at the same time. Like Robert Talone says, it needs to be sort of random. Some roto machines use a three to one ratio. That means one axis spins three times while the other one's going one time more slowly. This will depend on the orientation of the character and your mold as well. Check out our leftover resin. When it's still soft and curing, but it's that stretchy, that's usually a good sign to me. Now I can really show you why I made the joint the way I did. If you're making real vinyl figures, you can get by with really thin, really thin. I've been studying on existing sofa bit joints uh, to kind of figure out, you know, how they do it, but like that can pop off and that arm can go. Last Bastion, thank y'all for sending me these wonderful, wonderful figures right here. But because this resin is softer, I achieved the rigidity I was after by going with the thicker cast. The surface of the KX Flex resin has a nice soft feel to it. It's firm but pleasantly flexible. 
not as slick as the Smoothcast 45D, which to me feels more like a plasticky, uh, kind of like a vinyl. So, you know, it's a trade-off depending on what you're going for. With resin, we have a lot of trade-offs, and I don't feel like this video would be complete without a quick rundown of the resins I tested. First, we have Specialty Resin Company's Tough Cast 65D. It's got a really fast pot life of two minutes, but to me, it's too rigid. Next up, we have Alumalite Flex 80 with a pot life of four minutes. Very soft, pretty tough, but too bubbly. I also tried Smooth Cat 65D, which is what I made the free range chicken out of. It's too good for roto casting, but not for something soft and flexible. Simpack 68. Uh, has a pot life of four minutes, but a total cure time of 48 hours. This is an absolutely fantastic, tough, durable resin. If you're making cashew or muscle style figures, you might consider Simpact or Task 16 right here. It's another very tough, rubbery resin. These are the types of resins that you want to have a gang mold prepared to where you pour multiple figures and put it in a pressure pot. But coming back to the rotocasting resin, Smoothcast 45D is, I think, an all-around pretty good choice. Pot life of 5 minutes, cure time of 30 minutes. So this is one you might want to get you a rotocasting machine or come up with something. But the long open time allows you to pull a vacuum and get the bubbles out if you like to. But for me right now for Fofubi, KX Flex 90 with a pot life of two and a half minutes and handling time of 30 minutes. That's about my favorite resin. You can actually take it out the mold in about seven minutes, I have found. Now for the record, I did try the KX Flex 60, but I found it to be a little bit too, too soft. And I feel like if we could not paint it, it just wouldn't quite be right. So here's a rundown on the paints that I tried right here. I focused a lot on the Vinyl Wonder because that's true vinyl tar paint. It's vibrant, it's some of my favorite paint. But I knew I would need to try some acrylics. I know a lot of people like acrylics and then we have rattle can paint. But before we paint anything, we have to do surface preparation. So that means rubbing some thinner onto the surface, some paint thinner. But what it does with normal plastic like polyvinyl chloride is it opens up the substrate. And that allows the paint to bind to the surface. Or if I really need to paint the stick, I might come in here and flame or kneel it. Oh, that's probably dangerous. Probably shouldn't light that up. Anyway, I have a video all about flame and kneeling. There's a link in the description. Be careful with this mess. Here we have two Smoothcast 45D samples, one with thinner preparation, one with a flame preparation. And watch the difference. So this is thinner prep. Look at that. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see a little bit of buckling right there? Let's slide it down. See that? But here's the flame in here. And let's do the same thing with it. And I'm just handling it. I'm not worried about the paint. Uh, that's flame annealing again, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want you to see how effective it is, but mercy, please be careful doing it, okay? All right. I thought I would test this Cryoline Fusion. This is also on a piece of Smoothcast 45D. And once again, the prep was a thinner. So let's just... Mind focus? All right. That feels... Turn the microphone. You see what I'm saying? We can, we're going to be able to scratch it eventually, but I'm just, what I'm saying, I've painted stuff before and I could rub it off with my thumb and that ain't no good, but this is actually, I'm calling it pretty acceptable. That's no coating, by the way. That's just one coat of spray paint. Like right here, I got a piece of actual uh, scrap, scrap vinyl. Let's see. All right, so... That side is not coated, and that side is ooh, is coated with the vinyl wonder gloss. So that's that's a real piece of soft vinyl, and we can scratch it, but not on the coated side. Just remember that. Remember that coating is important. Now this is one that surprised me. Vinyl, a uh, duplicolor vinyl and fabric. Usually, uh, 
I don't know. It's pretty good, but watch this. Oh, baby, I don't like that. I don't like that. See that cracking? However, this FX paint, which is made for a flexible surface, is actually an acrylic paint made for cosplay. Right, bye. And this is not coated, so it might scratch. Yeah, well, what are we doing? Ooh, okay. That's pretty solid right there, I think. Uh, Angela's paints are another uh, flexible acrylic paint I tried. I like it. When you can twist it, especially look, this is the real one. When you do like that inside and you look at that and it ain't buckling on the inside, that's a wonderful sign. Yeah, baby. Now I ordered some Angela's flexible clear coating, which did not arrive in time for this video, but uh, let's do a scratch test anyway. See, I got a really, ooh. I got a really bear down on it. I'm telling you, I'm not playing around. I have to try to make that paint come off of it. And that ain't no, that ain't no, oh baby. That ain't no coating on it. I know a lot of y'all use golden paint, so I tried golden paint. It works on Smoothcast 45D with a prep first. Ooh. Remember to prep your surface, okay. I don't know. I think I would call that acceptable. What do y'all think? Between thinner preparation or flame annealing, you should be able to get your paint to stick to one of these resins. So we sculpted a, a little figure right there using a variety of clays and made a faux fubi, a soft resin copy. Pretty happy about that right there, ladies and gentlemen. So the next step might be to take it to the wax stage. Oh yeah, that's where you can really finish it out with some smooth details. And what about making our own metal paint mask? Oh baby. Now as far as being able to just produce bukutas of these things, a uh, craftsman would have to get a motorized uh, rotocaster and also we would have to uh, gang mode it so so inside of there would be instead of just you know two modes in there we would have multiple multiple so you get multiple characters at one time and also you know i did modify mine to work with the rotocaster with that slipping out but you really don't want rounded you want more square square modes come on don't do that craft man trying to show you if i can do it you can do it there was a lot of technical information covering several different products, so please check the description for links and additional information. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Direct supporters, thank you especially. Y'all are the main reason I get videos done, so thank you. Until next time, I love y'all, and keep on steady crafting.